I've just come back from America, and in the comedy field and television, I mean, yours is on, on an equivalent basis. You say to someone, well, first of all, they spot your English. My, you're, you're English. The first thing they say is, do you know Benny Hill? Not Mrs. Thatcher, not the Queen. Well, I'm prettier, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it the truth? <laughs> Benny Hill, the comedic genius known for his slapstick humor and timeless wit, captivated audiences worldwide with his inimitable style. While most recognize him for his iconic show, The Benny Hill Show, his early life and career laid the foundation for his eventual success in the world of entertainment. Born Alfred Hawthorne Hill on January 21, 1924, in Southampton, England, Benny Hill grew up in a modest household. His father, Alfred Hill, was an entrepreneur and shopkeeper, while his mother, Helen Cave, was a homemaker. During World War II, he worked as a milkman, but his true passion was in comedy, and he soon found himself performing in local amateur theatrical productions. It wasn't long before Hill's talent caught the attention of producers, leading to his first professional gigs in variety shows and radio broadcasts. In the post-war years, Hill honed his craft on the British comedy circuit, performing in clubs, theaters, and on radio programs. His comedic style, characterized by clever wordplay, physical comedy, and exaggerated characters, endeared him to audiences and earned him a growing fan base. Despite facing initial challenges and setbacks, including periods of unemployment and financial instability, Hill remained dedicated to his craft, continuously refining his act and pushing the boundaries of comedic expression. One of Hill's early breakthroughs came in the form of radio comedy, where his distinctive voice and comedic timing made him a sought-after talent. His appearances on popular radio programs such as Workers' Playtime and Variety Bandbox showcased his versatility as a performer and solidified his reputation as one of Britain's most promising comedic talents. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, Hill's career continued to flourish as he transitioned into television. While his work on The Benny Hill Show would later define his television legacy, it was his early appearances on programs like High There that laid the groundwork for his future success. Early television ventures allowed Hill to experiment with different comedic formats and characters, further refining his comedic persona and paving the way for his iconic show. Behind the scenes, Hill was known for his meticulous attention to detail and relentless work ethic. He was deeply involved in every aspect of his productions, from writing and directing to performing and editing. Hill's commitment to excellence and his tireless pursuit of comedic perfection set him apart from his contemporaries and earned him the respect and admiration of his peers. Despite his rising fame and success, Hill remained grounded and humble, never forgetting his roots or the struggles he faced on his journey to stardom. He was known for his generosity towards fellow comedians and his willingness to mentor aspiring talent, reflecting his genuine love for the art of comedy. But let's back up a little bit. How did young Alfred grow up to become Benny? What caused the Benny Hill show to fail after so many years of success? What were Benny Hill's final years like, and how is it received today? We'll first have to take you back to England in the 1920s. Alfred Hawthorne Hill was named after his father and was the middle child of three children. His father owned a surgical appliance shop, and the family was an ordinary middle-class family. It should be noted that Mr. Hill's shop sold mostly French letters, and that's how the family was able to support themselves. In case of any non-Brits watching, French letters refers to condoms. Nevertheless, money was often difficult to come by, and the Hill family had their financial struggles like so many other ordinary families during that era. Alfred's parents were frugal and tried to keep as much money as possible, going as far as stuffing their cash under the mattress rather than storing it in a bank. This frugality would become characteristic of Benny Hill, and the press would often have a go at him because of it. Young Alfie didn't always have the happiest childhood. His father, often known as the Captain, was very strict, and this brought on a lot of fear and unhappiness for Alfie. There were times when his father was violent. His mother was gentle, but wasn't always able to protect her children. Nevertheless, she would often spoil young Alfie and indulged him. As he grew older, he began cross-dressing, not in an adult way, but just as a fun and humorous way, something which he would carry on into his entertainment career. He would often perform sketches while behaving like a woman. I think 
Of the two, I probably loved my mother more than my father. I was closer to my mother than my father. When my father died, I cried buckets, but not when my mother died. Perhaps I felt a bit guilty at not loving my father as much as I should have done. As Alfie grew older, he began developing a pastime, going to the theater. He loved going and watching the various performances, but something inside him told him that he couldn't just be a spectator. One day, he had to become one of the performers. And it was quite clear to him what type of performer he wanted to be. The comedian used to come on, he used to get more applause than anybody else. He was always surrounded by pretty dancing ladies, and the audience loved him. The fat women in the audience would go, oh, did you, oh what he said? Oh, in the awful, oh, and applaud. And I thought, hey, he must get more money than anybody else because he's got top billing. Surrounded by beautiful girls. Everybody loves him. That's for me. But as was expected of the time, the thought of being a comedian was no laughing matter if you came from a middle-class family. Alfie's father insisted that he get a proper job. Benny began working several odd jobs, including a stint at Woolworths, as well as delivering milk, in those days by horse and carriage. When he had spare time, he would perform at concert halls, small gigs here and there. He eventually hopped on a train from Southampton to Waterloo with barely a penny in his pocket and just a suitcase to speak of. But he had optimism and dreamt of becoming a star. Slowly but surely, he was getting a gig every now and then and was becoming known among theater circles. But his career in show business came to a halt thanks to a mustachioed man who wasn't too keen on all that singing, dancing, and mucking about. He had found a job as a stage manager but had to serve in the army. Luckily for him, he didn't have to serve as a soldier. He was able to get a job in the entertainment corps and entertain soldiers during this harsh time. It was at this time he met the legendary comedian Reg Varney. While Alfie considered Reg Varney to be his mentor, Reg felt that Alfie, who would soon become known as Benny Hill, didn't need to learn much. I didn't have to teach him anything. It was already there. And he was a brilliant uh, performer. There's no two ways. Well, the proof of pudding, isn't it? And look where he got. After the war, Benny Hill toured as an entertainer throughout England. He had initial popularity, but it wasn't meant to last. After some time, his popularity began to wane. He noticed that the applause wasn't as tumultuous as he wanted, and when he returned to London, he wasn't in high spirits. But little did he know that an even bigger opportunity was around the corner. Benny Hill had experience in theater as well as radio, but a new medium was coming, and it was in this medium where he'd find his calling. He realized that television would reach a wider audiences without ever having to tour. But he felt he was no longer a successful performer. He decided he would work behind the scenes as a scriptwriter. As I wasn't doing terribly well as a performer, as a comic, I thought I'd try my hand at writing. So for seven weeks, I wrote a lot of sketches. I went in to see that jolly nice Ronnie Waldman, and who was head of light, of light entertainment, and um, he said, what's all this about? And I said, well, there's a lot of sketches there. Um, I think you know, television's going to need material, um, and I don't want you to think uh, I've chosen the best sketch and put it on the top. Uh, tell, if you like, tell me. I'll flip through. You say stop, and I'll take that sketch out, and you can read that one. Ronnie Waldman found a sketch he liked and asked Benny to present it to him. Benny, a bit confused, decided to hand the sketch to Ronnie. Ronnie responded by saying he wanted Benny to perform the sketch. Ronnie didn't want to read it. He wanted to see it come alive. And you have to make a well-known phrase or saying, and you have 50 seconds to beat the clock starting from now. A well-known phrase or saying. That's it. You're getting it? Yes? You're getting nearer? Yes? Well done! <laughs> and thus, the birth of the Benny Hill show began. Ronnie told Benny that he thought the sketches should be performed by Benny himself and no one else. It was thanks to Ronnie Waldman that Benny Hill made his comeback in showbiz, and this time, he was here to stay. The Benny Hill show first debuted in 1956, and it was shot in black and white. The show was a variety program that contained singing, dancing, and of course, comedy. It was an immediate success and became one of the BBC's most popular shows. It wasn't long until he became the most popular face on TV in the whole of Britain. Most stage performers couldn't adapt to television and eventually faded away from the public eye. Benny Hill immediately understood how to perform for a television set, and thus his popularity was instant. He truly loved television, and it was quite clear he was born to perform in this medium. He could invent different characters and play them all at the same time. While this might be standard now, it was unusual for the time. In fact, it's safe to say Benny Hill was a pioneer. Each episode was a hit. 
and his career kept going from strength to strength. However, he was never one to rest on his laurels. While he enjoyed sketch comedy, he also wanted to venture into sitcoms. He did create a show called Portrait of a Bridegroom, which was released in 1962. He played four characters in the program, though it wasn't as much of a success as The Benny Hill Show. Nevertheless, his signature program continued to be a success, and by now, Benny Hill was such a star, he could take risks and producers were willing to give him time and money to create great material. However, eventually, Benny Hill moved away from the BBC to briefly work with ITV. This relationship didn't last either, and his biggest success came when he signed a contract with Thames TV. With Thames TV, he released a new show, which was also called The Benny Hill Show. But this version of his popular sketch comedy series would take the country and the world by storm. He also recorded songs that became chart toppers. On top of that, he began acting in TV shorts and TV movies. This included playing Ernie, where he played a vivacious milkman. He played a toy maker in the hit film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and who could forget his role, Professor Simon Peach, in The Italian Job. Probably some of the ladies in that hit film weren't going to forget him anytime soon. Without having to put in much effort, Benny Hill was now a star, not just in Britain, but also in America. The humor sometimes didn't translate, nor did the type of English or the jokes, but the visual comedy and slapstick scenes is what made the show a success in America. The amount of money he was earning was much higher, and the popularity he received in America was insane. He would get mobbed by crowds of fans in America, in Britain, and even in France. He was now a wealthy man as well as a star. While he appreciated his stardom, he was quite uncomfortable with his wealth. He lived in a small flat and didn't own many possessions. The press found it strange that he lived so simply, or in modern terms, as a minimalist, with all his wealth. You can only wear one shirt at a time, one pair of trousers at a time, you only eat one meal at a time. Um, if I pop over to Paris, which I do occasionally, uh, and I've got a lot of money with me, what am I going to do with it? I can stay at a nice hotel, I can go to the Olympia or the Bobino Music Hall and see a show. The most I can pay is about £20 for a seat. Um, I'm on a permanent diet. I can't dine at Maxim's every night, much as I'd love to. Not because of the money, but because of this that come, travels around with me. <laughs> Overall, at this point in his career, Benny Hill was the happiest man on earth. He had a successful career, more money than he could handle, and the love of fans at home and abroad. It seemed nothing could go wrong in his life. But as a star rises, there are always those who try to bring him back to earth, hoping he'll land with a massive thud and preferably flat on his face. Fans of The Benny Hill Show will remember that many of the sketches involved beautiful women. He would often invite actresses to his apartment for the auditions and would also date many of these actresses. As one can expect, rumors and lurid headlines reached the tabloids trying to tarnish his image. He was always quiet about his private life, and this has led to even more speculation since his death. Because he never married, there were also rumors that he was homosexual. And it's important to remember this was illegal in the UK until the late 60s. But Benny Hill was rather secure. He didn't care about these rumors and often found it hilarious that such nonsense was written about him. Nevertheless, his career was going great, and the Benny Hill show continued to be popular. However, this couldn't last forever. I believe there should be censorship. I, there's lots of things on telly that offend me. I mean, you know, like when a comedian can end every single program tearing off a woman's clothes and then chasing her around a park in, a, in her underwear, like uh, that for me, in a world where women can't even walk safe in the parks, is, is pretty, pretty worrying. This quote by comedian and writer Ben Elton was one of many criticisms hurled at Benny Hill. It should be noted there was never a scene in any episode of The Benny Hill Show as described by Ben Elton on his appearance on Sir Terry Wogan's chat show. But as time passed and tastes changed, The Benny Hill Show and its star were now viewed in a very different light. The Benny Hill Show lasted for 30 years, from 1959 to 1989. It had breaks in between and was produced by various networks from the BBC to Thames TV. The show premiered in black and white and ended in color. A hundred episodes were produced, and these 100 have appealed to every generation. A person growing up in the 60s watched Benny Hill, as did their children growing up in the 80s. Today, reruns of the show are shown and still manage to win over new fans. But not everyone was impressed. The Benny Hill show had many reruns, and in its final decade, it struggled to continue. Viewership had decreased, and by the end of the decade, Benny Hill was told his contract wouldn't be renewed. But why was this? The 1980s marked a shift in British comedy. The postcard humor, which characterized the Benny Hill show, 
The Carry On films and Are You Being Served were still popular, but not as popular as they once were. They were also receiving harsh criticism, not just from audiences who found them offensive, but also from industry colleagues. The 1980s was the start of the alternative comedy scene. This was a rebellious style of comedy that derailed the politics of the time, the social norms of British society, and much more. It was often inspired by traditional British humor, but there were also some members who critiqued it. Benny Hill's comedy was considered to be sexist and crass, and it wasn't favored by some members of the alternative comedy scene like Ben Elton. While it perhaps shouldn't matter what one comedian thinks of another, these criticisms against Benny Hill's comedy brought larger conversations about whether some types of comedy were just not funny. Benny Hill and his style of humor was now criticized as being vulgar and misogynistic and, in extreme cases, even responsible for actual indecent behavior towards women. Some sketches from The Benny Hill Show were criticized for being racist and enforcing negative stereotypes towards ethnic minorities. While the alternative comedy scene did a great bit to fight against racism in the UK, it was also alleged that its criticism of classic comedy like The Benny Hill Show was unfair and out of spite. Discussions on whether it was appropriate to rerun The Benny Hill Show continued to bubble. Whether he should be regarded as a comic genius was also brought into question. In his own country, where he was universally loved, he was now being increasingly maligned. Nevertheless, he remained a cult figure in countries like the US, France, and Japan. But to be increasingly rejected in your own culture could only bring sadness. Dearly beloved brethren, we are gathered here tonight to make money. And by the looks of things, we won't make very much. <laughs> Someone whose knowledge about British comedy is limited may be forgiven for not knowing how popular The Benny Hill Show and its star was. But oddly enough, it's almost seen as a tiny pebble today rather than a mighty stone in the tower that is British comedy. This is because there were concerted efforts to diminish the popularity and legacy of Benny Hill and his work. He had the reputation of being a reserved and polite gentleman who was loved by all. But as we mentioned, there are always people who want to see a star fall back to earth with a thud. Today, we seldom see the Benny Hill show discussed in the same vein as many other contemporary shows that are still appreciated. When the show got canceled in 1989, it wasn't just due to low ratings. No doubt the discussions about the style of comedy being inappropriate also worried the producers. They felt that Benny Hill had run its course. He could keep running around the park, but no one wanted to see the ladies chase him. That's not entirely true, of course. Had the Benny Hill show continued for a few years, it would likely still be popular. Even today, new fans are discovering and loving the show, and he's still respected. Thanks to the internet, many fans, old and new, are re-watching their favorite moments from the Benny Hill show on video streaming platforms. But the changing tastes in comedy, whether natural or as a result of the alternative comedy scene, was enough to push Benny Hill out of the spotlight which he dominated for 30 years. He was devastated that his show was canceled. He performed a one-time special in 1991 called Benny Hill in New York, but didn't continue to work after this. One year later, on April 20th, 1992, Benny Hill died from coronary thrombosis at age 68. He had died doing his favorite hobby, watching television. Two days after the death of Frankie Howard, fans are mourning the death of another great comic, Benny Hill. He died of a heart attack at his flat in southwest London. Benny Hill's career spanned decades. His blend of slapstick and innuendo had endeared him to millions. He was a cult figure in the United States and Japan, although his television show in Britain had been dropped after criticism that his style was sexist. Comedian Benny Hill died yesterday of a heart attack. He was 67. Hill was the first comic star of British television, and his show became a cult favorite in this country in the 1980s. In the three decades since Benny Hill's passing, there are still discussions about his comedy and even about his life. Since he was a private person, he was always a mystery for tabloid journalists who were hoping to find some lurid details about his life. According to one of his friends, the now-deceased actress Sarah Kemp, Benny Hill had a sadness which he didn't reveal to the public. According to her, he was insecure about his looks. Many people felt that his flirtatiousness on screen was to make up for his real-life insecurity about impressing women. There was also speculation that he felt sad that he never got married or had children of his own. 
His earnings were generous and no doubt gave him a sense of financial security. But his minimalism wasn't just because he was content with a few possessions. The fact that his parents were frugal and that he grew up struggling financially gave him a phobia of spending money, one that allegedly stressed him and caused him to be mocked by the press. At times, he would wear the same clothes until the threads began falling out. He would often prefer to fix a pair of shoes rather than buy a new pair. He never owned a car and always rented his apartment. After his death, his estate, which was worth millions of pounds, was divided amongst his nieces and nephews. One wonders how Benny Hill felt during his final years. His health was declining and he refused a heart bypass surgery, which contributed to his illness. We can only imagine that he died a broken man who felt sad that his long career all of a sudden came to an end and that there was a section of the comedy industry and the public who disliked him because of his style of humor. For many, he had run his course and there was no chance of getting him a new show or casting him in a film. His small role as Professor Peach in The Italian Job was loved, but one wonders how a modern audience today would see it. For many, they want his legacy to die. Others, like Ben Elton, are still discussing him 30 years later, though not in a positive light as one might expect. Apparently, I killed Benny Hill. Yes, that's what they said when he, when he died, that I harried poor defenseless lovable old Benny Hill into an early grave. Did I bollocks? He just got old and boring. It's been over 30 years since Benny Hill's passing and the cancellation of The Benny Hill Show after the producers felt the humor hadn't caught up with the times and simply wouldn't succeed. Benny was in his 60s and seeing him flirt with women in such a cheeky manner just wasn't cricket. No one really knows what would have happened if it continued to go on for a few years. But one thing is for sure, Benny Hill's name is still remembered by fans as well as comedy industry veterans. Despite the fact that he had his critics among younger comedians, he also had a legion of fans among some of Britain's best comedy performers today. Have you got the music upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> Benny Hill loved to watch films with his friends. He especially loved watching Charlie Chaplin films and would sometimes tear up at some of the more emotional films like The Great Dictator and Limelight. It would please him to know that Charlie Chaplin himself owned video cassettes of The Benny Hill Show and saw Benny Hill as a comedy genius. But it didn't just end with Charlie Chaplin. Many great British comedians also loved Benny Hill from Rob Brydon to Lee Mack to the Pythons. In an early episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Carlton tries to dismiss Benny Hill, whereas Jeffrey proudly says, I like Benny Hill. Many celebrities also loved Benny Hill. This included Mickey Rooney, who had planned on working with Benny, though this sadly never came to fruition. I've written a picture for Benny and I. I wish Benny and I could do a picture together. It's called Wait Till the Swelling Goes Down. I, I'm blown away by his lyrics, the music, uh... And I think he has very good choices of, of ladies uh, and garter belts, uh, which we all love a lot. Many of Benny's jokes or jokes I heard in grammar school, the first slightly off-color joke I've ever heard, I'm sure that Benny's repeated uh, at some time or another. And, and uh, I've caught him at most of them. I'm not catching him because that's, that's some of the humor. It, it's, it's, it's cornball stuff, and that's funny. When The Benny Hill Show was produced by Thames TV, it was distributed in 93 countries. That's how popular and legendary Benny Hill was, that he was able to appeal to such a wide and diverse audience. Upon his death, there were critics who wanted to beat his comedy down, but there were many who weren't afraid to defend him, his humor, and his legacy. I think the feminists don't have is a sense of humor. Uh, um, I mean, everything, they don't realize the feminists don't realize is that everything serious is sent up. They think they're the only ones who are being sent up. Everything is sent up. It's perhaps safe to say that Benny Hill's legacy is a controversial one. While there are those fans who believe his name must always be mentioned amongst British comedy legends, there are others who believe he was of his time, but his time has ended. 
But one can't ignore history. It's a fact that he was one of the most popular British comedians of his time and still wins over fans today. It should also be noted that he was a pioneer of television comedy. While British comedy on television is such a huge part of British culture today, it was a new phenomenon when Benny Hill began working with the medium. As we mentioned earlier, Benny Hill was one of the first actors to play multiple characters in a single sketch. He wasn't afraid to experiment with different characters, subcultures, ethnicities, social classes, and so on. He paved the way for sketch comedy series like Monty Python. He was made for the time he grew up in, and though this might be a bygone era, it's an era that many remember fondly, including those younger fans who weren't even alive. But above all, Benny Hill's life story is an incredible one. It was risky for someone coming from a middle-class background with constant financial struggles to pursue a career in entertainment. What's remarkable about Benny Hill's career is that he didn't give up. It's clear Benny Hill isn't going anywhere. While he may have left us, he is truly immortal from his work. He was a renaissance man and one who was well-versed about the entertainment industry. The Benny Hill Show lasted for a hundred episodes, and in a hundred years from now, we expect they'll still make us laugh. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you a fan of Benny Hill? Do you still feel his legacy will continue years from now? Or will he be forgotten due to the changing tastes and attitudes towards his style of comedy? Let us know in the comments section below.